What's, my brain's not working anymore. Oh, I'm getting nervous, guys. Hey guys, this is Christy Lewis from WFC in Space. Today I'm here with my January wrap up and my February TBR. I've been doing some mini vloggy type things on my Instagram story. So if you're interested in seeing kind of like more day by day wrap up type things, you can head over there. So I've finished nothing and I'm in the middle of everything. That's not true. I finished a few things. So one of the things that I actually finished this month was Tale of the Nine Tailed, which is a K drama that I talked about a lot in my last wrap up. So I'll link that up here. I'm not going to talk about it too much, but I finished it. This second half, there wasn't the same element of mystery as the first half because the mystery was solved by the end of the first half. By the halfway point, I was so invested in the characters that I honestly didn't care and I loved it anyways. There's some really fantastic acting characters like switching sides. This actually convinced me that I'm gonna love K-drama, but I'm moving on to Netflix so that I can also watch some Spanish language TV. I finished 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. As you can see, I have some notes. I've been working on a video. I'm gonna keep my rating at a C plus for this one because even though it was pretty fun to read, I really enjoyed the magical style of it. And one character in particular, I really liked. There was a lot of funny moments, like a lot of funny moments. So like in the sense that it was an enjoyable read, yes. It's not very accessible. This is very much based on my own experience of it. I'm giving it a C plus. I bet if I could read it in Spanish and read some of the Spanish notes on it, I would enjoy it more. My rating would skyrocket. I also finished the fourth Betsy Tasty book, Betsy and Tasty Go Downtown. And this is just the maximum cos factor. It's my favorite one so far. It involves libraries and loving libraries and going to libraries on snowy days and reading for hours and then going to a bakery for lunch. I'm also very excited to be hearing Kate and Rainey's point of views about this book. We have The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I am 25% of the way into this and hopefully I'll get a little bit farther by the end of the month, but you know, if I don't, that's okay. I'm really happy with that. That is enough to get me through the first chunk of Brothers Karamazov 2021. I feel like I'm mispronouncing the name. I'm sorry. <laughs> I I'm really loving this. There's so much family drama. There is some philosophy in there, but you know what? The philosophy is actually lighter than I thought, especially like the last, I don't know, like five or 10% of it. It was so heavy into the family drama that I'm excited about the interpersonal relationships here. Next we have Washington, A Life by Ron Chernow. This is a biography that I'm reading with Ramsey from Rajathan, and we're talking about it on his Discord. The Washington livestream will be on Ramsey's channel at Rajathan on February 18th at 6 p.m. PST and 9 p.m. EST. It's amazing. I'm learning so much about battles and about the character of Washington. He was a really passionate guy and he worked really hard to control his temper and control his emotions. And I really just appreciate that about him. I'm learning a lot about his relationship with the institution of slavery. Also his battle tactics. I'm learning about the Revolutionary War in such a wonderful new way. I would just highly recommend this if Washington interests you at all. He was a character, man. It's actually a story. And that is my favorite thing when I can find nonfiction that is a story. It makes me happy. And I've been using the app called Bible in One Year, which I love. Our pastor recommended it to us like a while ago. Right now, it's just so perfect because there's an audio version. It's just wonderful to be able to fit that in every day. I've never been able to actually read the Bible every single day, like for a while. <laughs> and it's because of this app that it makes that accessible because it has like really good quality Bible study and commentary and prayers. I also spent a lot of time on language learning this month as well as cooking. I cooked a whole bunch of stuff. That's also been in my Instagram story. So definitely follow me there if you want to hear more about my daily life and my daily reading and stuff like that. I'm trying to keep it like two to four minutes. I rarely get it under two, I'm sure. It's probably closer to like four, three or four minutes every day. So I actually had a wonderful month and I'm extremely pleased with it, even though I didn't like finish all that many things. Wait, did I talk about the Dostoevsky biography? I only read a few chapters of that this month, but that's what I'm gonna be focusing on for the rest of the month until the introductory live stream. Make sure your notifications are on. February TBR, let's do it. I'm participating in lots of things, but like for a couple of the things, it's gonna have to be pretty bare bones because I'm also like hosting a lot of my own things. Realistically, I can probably only read one book per event that I'm doing this month because I really only finish, as you can see, not that many books per month usually. <laughs> that's just how it goes. Next month, I need to finish the Washington bio. That should not be a problem. I need to read Red Rising for Feb Rising, which I'm so excited about, guys. This is with Alan from Library of Alexandria, and we're talking about it in his Discord, and he said he might have live streams. I'm also reading Once Upon a River. This is with Katie from Books and Things. She's doing her own read-along. She said this is like a really like a favorite kind of book for her, so I'm excited about that. I'm also reading this book for Historathon, which is put on by Amanda the Curly Reader, and her co-host this year is Angie 
from the Science Mama, whose channel looks really fun. I've never really watched Angie's channel, and there's a bingo board. <laughs> Once Upon a River covers a book with no people on the cover, war, and subgenre, because it sounds like there's some kind of twisty thing about it. It doesn't sound like straight historical fiction, so that will cover three of the bingos squares. I would really love to do more, but like I said, I just need to chill and be okay with just reading like one book per readathon, even if I don't finish the bingo board. Just taking part is fun. I never read historical fiction, and now I get to read one and discuss it with one group and be supporting another read-along of a friend with one book. So I'm very excited about that. However, I do have other books that I might potentially be able to apply to the bingo board, and I'll show you which squares right here. The other historical fiction book that I really... I think it's historical fiction. Anyways, I really wanted to read it was The Tainted by somebody Madhaven. Madhaven. Sean Book Maniac talked about this a while ago. I really want to read it because he said it has like a really vivid setting, and I love vivid settings. However, unfortunately, it's not anywhere in the library system to a third reading challenge, which I know I'm crazy. I know, okay? So this one is the Black Lit Challenge. It's the one that Seiji the Artisan Geek is doing on her channel. I think Seiji is really cool. She's young and like a polyglot and she reads so much cool stuff and she draws and she paints and she sings and it's hilarious. She's very self-deprecating. I spent the entire evening planning my TBR for the Blacklit Challenge and then realizing that I need to just read one thing and focus on that. If I actually end up having more time, then I will read more and I would love to do that. The whole goal of the Blacklit Challenge is to get four points. I'll put the list up here for you if you want to join. It's actually not too hard to reach four points. Hey guys, just wanted to break in here and say that my plans have changed a little bit for February, so I just wanted to let you know I will be reading the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, and I'm reading it because I really loved A Lesson Before Dying, which is another book by the same author, Ernest J. Gaines, and I just found out that the actress who plays Miss Jane Pittman in the movie adaption just died recently, and she just looks fabulous, and I really want to see this movie with her in it. And I just got the book from a little free library and I want to read it now. So that is going on my list. That will be perfect for the Blacklit Challenge. It won't cover as many points as I was planning to cover, but you know what? That's what I'm really in the mood to read. So that's what I'm going to read. There are some other options like Dread Nation, which would be like a stronger contestant for the Historathon bingo board. So that would be cool. The last thing that I must do for February is I need to get halfway through the Brothers Cameras app. Doable since I'm already 25% of the way through very doable. I'm going to be reading Leave It to Smith, which is a book by P.G. Wodehouse that Emma the Bookish Princess just decided to make her Discord buddy read. So I immediately downloaded the audiobook. The ebook was only like 99 cents and we're off and running. I really loved Something Fresh. That was the only P.G. Wodehouse that I've ever actually like read and finished and I really loved it. I actually read it for my Emma the Bookish Princess vlog. Link up here if you want to see it. It's like my favorite vlog that I've ever done. <laughs> so here are the other things that I will be working on or will possibly be working on. I would like to get farther in the Dostoevsky bio. Oh my gosh, it's snowing. Wow. Look at that. It's sticking completely. See our little lanterns? Aren't they cute? Mom got me those for Christmas. Look at this. Holy cow. Anyways. Back to what we are talking about. Oh, Spurgeon's Sermons! Okay, John Plowman's talk is a book of Spurgeon's Sermons. I will be doing a read-along of this with Victoria the Musical Bookworm, Carla from Race to Walk, and Alan from Alexandria, who you may know. His cat is named Spurgeon. And then, okay, we'll have a few Betsy and Tasty books. Heavens to Betsy and Betsy in Spite of Herself, which this cover is adorable. This edition is adorable. The titles are adorable. I'm very excited about this. Um, I don't feel any pressure to actually finish those this month. We're kind of like taking it pretty chill. This is book five and six. Very excited. I really, really loved book four. And the other change that I'm making to my TBR is a thing called the booktube spin that like lots and lots of my friends are doing. It's where you make a list of 20 books and the creator, oh, what was his name? I'm so sorry. I will put it right here. I just watched his video. He is going to spin a wheel or something and he will be coming up with a number. And the number on the list of 20 is that's the book that you have to read, whichever book is that number on your list. We have February and March to read these books. And I think that's kind of a terrifying idea and also kind of a fun idea. You're supposed to pick things that are of different like categories in your life. Something you're scared of, something that'd be really fun. I have five categories. One is obligations because I have four arcs on my night galley that I really never got to. So the first one on the list is Journey from St. Petersburg, One Writer's Beginnings. It's about either wealthy, odd, and true, a face like glass. And then the fifth one 
is one that was a gift to me for Christmas that I really want to get to. The Illustrated Harry Potter Volume 2. I have it here, but it's on the bottom of a big stack, so I'm not going to pull it out. Hopefully that one gets picked. That's what I want. The next series is recommendations. These are books that have been recommended to me. So this is number six. So now we're going through six through 10 on the 20 list. First, we have the book Woman of Troublesome Creek. This is one that actually I won on a giveaway on Krista from Books and Jam's channel. She sent it to me and she said she really loved it. So I would love to actually get to this. Next, we have Grantchester. This is actually a book that I started back in, I think, December. That Kate Howard recommended to me. She did like a whole recommendations video just for me. I would love to make that a priority. It doesn't have an audiobook, so it would be a little difficult. I'm a little bit nervous about that. I really just read better with audiobooks. The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie. That's another cozy mystery that Kate Howe recommended to me that I would also love to get to. Then we have Molly's Game. This is actually about Molly Bloom, who was an Olympic skier, I guess. But Kevin and I just watched the movie. He really loved it, and he picked up this book. He blew through this one. He said it was really good, and he said I might enjoy it. Next. Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. This one was recommended to me by Aaron from Booked and Busy. People say that the audiobook is great. That was 10. Molly's Game was nine, should I say that? And Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie was eight. So we're moving on to the next category for 11 through 15. This is the DNFs category. These are books that I've DNFed. So first, we're gonna start off with Midnight Sun. I DNFed this like right after it came out. It's so long. I enjoy Twilight. I'm a Twi hard fan, I love them. But this one is really long and kind of repetitive. It's just, I really have a problem with things that are long like needlessly so, unless I'm like thoroughly enjoying them. But even then I usually prefer that they'd be shorter because I'm a slow reader. And if it's a brick, it's gonna take me a long time. Another one that I recently DNF, Live Ship Traders. I'm really not that into it, but you know what? If I get this picked, I will finish that sucker. I really hope it doesn't get picked. <laughs> Next, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. One of my dearest friends named Beverly, who has been my friend since I was an awkward teenager. I've heard it's a really good book. I've heard that the girl loves to read and she goes to a library. I didn't get that far. It was like too grim for me at the time. <laughs> but you know, I'd love to get to that, finally. <laughs> also, The White Lotus Sutra. I am the worst and I abandoned Noah and Amakai while they were reading this. Amakai finished it. Noah was doing these awesome lectures for us. I got over halfway. Okay, and this last one would completely destroy me. TBR and I would probably have to blow through a bunch of it on audiobook, which would kind of ruin the experience. Or maybe I could just make a pact to get through part of it, the next book, and that is Democracy in America. If you have been around my channel for a long time, you might have seen me do some videos on this. I was loving writing it. I did some deep dives, never finished it. I would love to get through the next part of this volume. I got through like volume, did I get through volume one? Maybe I'll make a pact to get through the next Part of this, either part two or part three, wherever I left off, that would probably be doable. And yes, it would take me two months. I'm nervous about that, guys. I would love to jump back into it, but <laughs> yikes. And then books that, if I finish them, that's because I'm being responsible. Oh, I want to read them all. But like, also, I would be a more responsible read-along host if I read these. So, here we go. Finishing the Dostoevsky bio would make me a more responsible read-along host in the next two months while the read-along is happening. The Communist Manifesto. I'm actually going to be doing a read-along of this and that book about the gulags in Russia, that one. I'm supposed to be reading both of these with Pete Wagart later this year. We haven't like set a complete date yet, but it would be very responsible of me to read this early, especially because we're reading The Brothers Karamazov and this is a big influence on Russia because it was written before that time. So, you know, people were talking about it. The Russian arc that I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna put it twice on this list because I really do feel obligated to read my arcs. Anything that I can read about Russia this year is important for me to read because I'm doing so many Russian read-alongs. I'm doing three major Russian read-alongs this year. Four, four major Russian read ones and five books total. No, a lot of books, a lot. I'm not even gonna count anymore. I keep forgetting to tell you guys the numbers. I'm sorry. The Russian arc is 18, Communist Manifesto is 17, Dostoevsky bio is 16. 19 would be finishing the Brothers Karamazov like first thing this month. The 12 Who Ruled, that's a book about the leaders of the French Revolution. And I'm going to be reading Les Mis later this year as a co-host of a read-along that Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf is putting together and she invited me to be a part of it, which I'm so thankful for in order to prepare for that. So those are my things. I'm now going to watch the video where the number is chosen so that I know what book I need to read. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. 
and gents, here we are for the inaugural booktube spin. Spin. So just in a few seconds, I'm going to spin the- Guys, is this some kind of sick joke? I just filmed an Instagram story sort of reading off my categories and I just kind of flippantly mentioned, oh, you know, you know what would really kill me? Democracy in America is on this list. So, you know, hope I don't get that. And then I, I watched the video and... Guess what got picked? Number 15. Democracy in America. You guys are dead. Uh, okay, well, at least I made the stipulation that I could just read like part of it because I'm going to need to play on that. Yikes. So that is my wrap up in TBR. I hope that you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a like in the corner if you enjoyed this. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more from me. And make sure that you hit that bell notifications as well. If you want to be notified anytime I make a new video, it'll pop up on your phone. And make sure your notifications are turned on. You do that in your settings on your phone. Thanks again for watching, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Let me know down in the comments what your plans are for February and what you read in January and... Anything else you want to talk about? <laughs> Take care. Bye.